In this video discussion, I'll provide some thoughts on the paper entitled Evidence-Based Performance Measures for Rhinoplasty, a Multidisciplinary Performance Measure Set. The American Society of Plastic Surgeons called together specialists from the major organizations that are seeking to develop performance measurements to define parameters for acceptable clinical practice relevant specifically to cosmetic and functional rhinoplasty. The goal of these performance measures is to provide guidelines for surgeons to assess their performance compared against national standards in an effort to improve overall patient care. Over 200,000 rhinoplasties were performed in 2018. With these numbers increasing in the era of COVID-19, these guidelines become even more important to the consumer. The focus of the study group was based on four major performance measures, including preoperative evaluation and patient engagement, intraoperative complications, and patient-centered outcomes. The first performance measure involved the pre-surgical discussion of motivations and outcomes for patients undergoing rhinoplasty. The group felt that clinicians should ask about the patient's motivations for surgery and their expectations for outcomes and also provide feedback on whether those expectations are a realistic goal of surgery. Revision rates for rhinoplasty hover around 10% and this is really thought to be an underestimation. The study group felt this was an area that improvement could be made through improved patient education. This will also require surgeons to continue to improve their rhinoplasty knowledge and operative skills. There are many new techniques that are being introduced, including preservation rhinoplasty, structure rhinoplasty. It's critical that surgeons should make an effort to learn and observe other surgeons through courses, videos, and publications prior to embarking on these new techniques. The second performance measure focused on nasal airway obstruction, which is actually one of the major reasons patients come in for revision surgery after rhinoplasty. This is an area that the study group pointed to as a priority when it comes to improvement and education starting at the level of the residency training program. I see many patients coming for revision surgery with moderate to severe functional problems after undergoing prior rhinoplasty. Repair of these problems frequently requires a more extensive surgery using the patient's rib cartilage or ear cartilage. The third performance measure looked at post-operative management of pain after rhinoplasty. The group felt that data showed that too many opioids are being prescribed and recommended that additional data be collected on this topic. The fourth performance measure looked at the importance of using patient surveys or patient reported outcome measures or PROMS to follow patient satisfaction after rhinoplasty. This was believed to be an important issue and the study group recommended that clinicians incorporate the use of PROMS into their practice to help them identify deficiencies and try to improve their outcomes. In our office, patients are asked to fill out these surveys before and after surgery to monitor their level of satisfaction with their nasal function and their overall cosmetic outcome. Examples of such PROMS are the schnoz and nose questionnaires. The recommendations based on these four performance measures must be passed on to those performing rhinoplasty, and additional work should be completed on other issues such as the use of implants and homograph materials in rhinoplasty, rhinoplasty marketing and social media, non-surgical rhinoplasty. This effort by the American Society of Plastic Surgeons, the American Academy of Facial Plastic and Reconstructive Surgery, and the Rhinoplasty Society as well as the other organizations is very important to try to come to some consensus on how to better treat rhinoplasty patients and move toward better long-term aesthetic and functional outcomes.